Christian from Coastal Survival. I'm up in the middle of the woods on a mild but windy day. Hopefully the mic can pick up the sound today. It's really mild winter this year. It's been a lovely summer and the plants are behaving quite strangely. They haven't read the text in the encyclopedia that says when they're supposed to grow. It's all about the weather in nature, especially when we're out finding wild food. And you really have to go off what the weather's doing, or what the weather's been doing rather. So I'm going to do a short video today on taking you out around the woods into the fields and just give you a quick look at what wild greens are available to us this time of year in the middle of a really mild winter in the southwest of the UK. Another great plant. Just starting to grow in amongst the leaves here. This is where it's on the edge of a track. It's just been opened up. It's a little bit of canopy clearance there. The ground's quite warm. There's loads of fallen leaves there. It's been mild. Uh, cleavers. I'll just bring that up to the camera to show you there. Cleavers or sticky buds is another name for it. Sticky willy. Really good plant. Uh, lovely when it's this small, uh, as it gets possibly beyond six inches, it becomes really tough. Uh, goose grass is another name for it. Um, it's really spiky little prickles on there, it's what sticks to your clothes, and the seeds are then transported. The seeds are also useful later on in the year, and that's probably the only um, time I use the plant throughout the year um, after it's got this big. Um, for food wise, that is, the, the seeds are coffee substitute and in the purple stage they can be toasted and ground down that's between when they're, when they're green and they're brown they're slightly crimson in colour as many seeds are uh, the cleavers um, stops bleeding uh, good for bruising bleeding it uh, massages the lymphatic system it's really good after you've had infections again for cleaning the body out uh, when it's really big besides you know, I said I don't use it for food when it's really big and it's spiky. It's really good for washing your hands. It's got loads of liquid in there. You can grab a big bunch of it and really easily expel loads of it, express loads of the water onto your hands. And where it's got those spikes and little bristles all over it, it's really good for cleaning your hands off. So that's another use we can use it for in the summer. But um, particularly really good at the start of the year or in a really mild winter like this when it's really small. And it's these little tiny shoots that you're after. And just pick off any of the brain bits there. And literally just an inch or so big, they're really good, almost like a pea flavour, so could be substituted for pea shoots, um, really good. They can go into a tea as well, nice cleansing tea, uh, possibly for a tonic for the kidneys, etc. But I personally just like to munch them like this this time of year. It's always good when you're out, you see the food is growing, nature's providing it for you, and try and get into the habit of just picking a little bit every time you go out, right off for the next plant. unusual to see. Primrose leaves coming up at this time of year but like I say it's been really mild. You never know what's going to happen. You really do have to just go by the weather and get out there. There's a couple of really good plants in here. Just underneath this elder tree here. Again it's got some leaves. I don't know why but it's not. It seems to have, well, we've had a first frost the other day. It seems to have wilted everywhere else. Maybe it's acting a little bit like a cloche or slightly warmer here for some reason. Maybe there's a Big pile of decayed leaves here and the ground's slightly warmer. But anyway, all the, all the decay I suppose for the first fertiliser. There's a really good plant here, especially for you bushcrafters. You like to go and sit out round the fire a lot. We didn't, as early sort of hunter-gatherers, sit round a fire and drink Coca-Cola and other drinks, modern teas and coffees. We used to rely on these plants not only for food, but also for medicine. And food was regarded as medicine and medicine was regarded as food. And obviously in our modern world now we have foods that we take in such quantities, our bodies haven't evolved taking in large amounts of salts and sugars, 
Um, although salt and sugar is not bad for us in the quantities we find in ready produced meals, it's obviously really bad for us. But years ago, we would have had other things to consider. We don't, most of us don't live by the fire. I live with a wood burner, I cook on an open fire. And one thing I find especially on the course is, is if we're in undercover under the parachute, etc., that smoke is going to have a detrimental effect on you and it is really bad for your lungs and you should try and avoid sitting in the wood smoke at all times. But here's a plant anyway that is really good for getting that sort of gunk out of the lungs that the smoke sort of creates or smoke residue leaves behind. And this is called ground ivy. I'll just bring it up to the camera now and hopefully that'll come in focus. It's a bit like a sort of hoof shape if you look at it and that's another name for it, another common name for it. It's ale hoof used to be used somehow in the beer, clean, uh, beer making process, fining or cleansing the beer. I'll just show you some more of it that's grown in there. It's called ground ivy and it actually grows along the ground with like trailers just like ivy and that's a one way of identifying it. Uh, the very best way to identify plants in my mind is with your sense of smell. Obviously we're using sight to try and home in on these plants there are lots of plants that look very similar. A lot of these green leaves look very similar to the untrained eye, even to the trained eye. And you must be really careful when you pick per leaf or per flower to make sure you don't pick anything that's poisonous that looks like it that's sat next to the plant there. But this plant's smell is unmistakable. And one way I get people to remember this plant, as I do with many plants, is to give it a really good mastication and really good crush up there in your fingers. And then close your eyes and breathe in that aroma and that smell and it's a really deep, rich, warming sensation on the lungs and instinctively you should understand that that is going to benefit the lungs, it's going to put warmth into the lungs, help the lungs generate themselves, cleanse themselves. Um, it's, let's just get a fresh leaf there, to talk about another way of identifying it. On the back of this leaf, it's got little tiny hairs on all the way down the stem and on the back when you look at the shape of the leaf pattern, or the ribs on the back of the leaf rather, if you hold it up that way, almost resembles the veins into the lungs. That's what's referred to as a doctrine of signatures, it's a way of looking at plants and seeing what parts of the plants resemble parts of the body, um, an old sort of way of trying to interpret what they're good for. So look this up anyway, look up some images of this, get some close-ups of it, come out smell it, like I say, close your eyes and you get that really rich, um, licorice is the wrong word for it, it's really hard to describe but unforgettable smell and once you've got that smell fixed in your, in your mind you can pick up another leaf that looks vaguely similar, it's got hairs on, similar shape, not really round, very different smell at all and this is the next plant I want to talk about, okay, let's get it right in there and find some nice examples of it. And it's growing here, looks a little bit like stinging nettles. Okay, hopefully you can see that. And it often has what's called a variegated leaf. So it's different colours, in this case it's white and green. Very similar to the um, hybrids of the hollies you get, the white and green hollies, they're variegated leaves. So quite easy to spot. At first glance you might think it's, it looks like ash sprinkled on top of the leaves. And that's one giveaway. The next thing is we get down in there and we look again and it's very hairy, so hopefully it's a lung herb. Look at the, ve the veins on the back of the leaf and again, very similar to the veins going into the lungs. And again, to identify this plant once we've got to that stage, to really identify it and be 100% sure, crush it up and smell it. And again, it's got a really cleansing, medicinal smell to it. That Plants that first smell quite medicinal and strong in that respect, um, as with a lot of the mustard families, as soon as they're cooked, they really mellow down. So this one in conjunction with the tea, or again, just put in and used as a vegetable. Um, you don't want to eat loads of these, these plants that have this really rich kind of deep lung smell to them. They're quite purgative. Um, you can have too many and sometimes they can give you an adverse effect, give you a bit of an unstable tummy. And you really need to be careful with wild plants when you go into them. Peanuts kill some people, okay? Just because I say this plant's good for me or I like it, I resonate with it, I smell it, I have a little nibble of it, I taste it, 
I build up a relationship with it and once I'm happy that my body wants this plant then I'm going to consume it so be careful there's a lot of wild plants that people are allergic to um, have adverse re reactions as far as people with sensitive skin touching plants like hogweed um, other plants have acids in them that sometimes if you have an overactive or understimulated kidneys they can have adverse effects so really trust your body listen to your body and just eat small amounts of them so I'm not going to spend too much more time up in the woods now just in, I'll stop if we find anything else on the track on the way to the meadow but I'm off down to the meadow now Sorry, I realised I didn't tell you what plant that was then. The last plant I was talking about was the Archangel. That was the one with the variegated leaves. Um, should say, it becomes a lot easier to identify as the season goes on. It has lovely yellow flowers that come out of it. So anyway, back off down to the meadow now. Let's make our way out of the top 